Hello and welcome to our lesson number two um, for chapter six. Today we are going to be looking um, more at what the Bible says about sin. So let's get started. So today's focus is the Bible on sin. And um, we're going to start by doing warm-up classwork 6.26, the seven capital sin worksheets. Um, I'll show you where this is um, in just a, a minute on Schoology. Um, but you're going to complete the worksheet. You don't have to turn this one in. It's for your own private, um, your own private reflection. Uh, and then after that, in class, we'll go over the homework from the last lesson, homework 6.1. And um, the idea is students will self-correct as we discuss it. Uh, if you turn it in without your corrections, um, it will not be counted. If you are absent, make sure to turn it in and write absent on top so I know to correct it myself. So um, before we go to, I can show you where the warm-up is. This is a quote from St. Augustine. I just wanted to point out, people hate the truth. For the sake of whatever it is that they love more than the truth. They love the truth when it shines warmly on them and hate it when it rebukes them. So, um, you know, that's, I, I think, a pretty true statement. Um, you know, we kind of go along with the truth as long as it's easy and what we want. But when it isn't, we go against it. And so um, we're going to be looking at what does the Bible say about the truth today? Before that, let's take a look at this warm-up. All right. <clears throat> so, whoop. Okay. So, again, we are working out of a black folder on Schoology. Here it is, Black Unit 2 Morality, Chapter 6. And we are going to go to the Red Classwork and Discussions folder. And it's Classwork 6.26, Seven Capital Sins Worksheet. You might also know them by um, their other title, The Seven Deadly Sins. So go to this handout, and you're going to open it up, put it into Notability. And this is one of those instances where you're on your honor. Um, you are going to um, look at the seven capital sins or vices, the seven deadly sins, and um, rate yourself. A, it describes me well. B, it reflects my basic approach most of the time. C, I'm so so on this. D, I have a long way to go. And um, if you scroll down, I have, oh, no, hang on. Sorry. Come on. Okay, so if you scroll down here, there's a ranking system. So if you put an A, it's four points, B, three, and so on. And then once you're done, you can total them up and get an idea of where you are. And this is not going to be collected. This is for your own private reflection. But, for example, one of the seven deadly sins is gluttony. And the question is, I eat healthy foods, exercise, reasonably, and get sufficient rest. For me... Um, I'd say D, I have a long way to go. That's pretty obvious. So, um, take some time just to reflect and think about this and then we'll continue our lesson. Oops. All right. Uh, before we continue, let's go over our objectives for this lesson. So our objectives are to define Hata, uh, Pesha, and this shouldn't be apathy. This should actually be a one. Or Avon. Um, and give examples of each. Explain the three consequences of sin. Define and explain O Felix Culpa and explain how it relates to Jesus' approach to sin. Uh, and explain St. Paul's theology of sin and redemption. Um, I'm not sure why that's there. That got copied and pasted. So um, let's go on. So the homework assignment had you guys looking at different ways the Bible describes sin. And so in your text, they point out three different words for sin. There are over 50. 
words for sin in the Hebrew Bible, um, but they focus on these three. So the first is hata or um, hamatria in Greek, and it means missing the mark. So in these cases, it's when we um, miss the target. What is the target? It's union with God. So um, when we miss the mark, we take some created good and make it a God. Uh, so the example they gave in the book is suppose, um, you know, they're having a blood drive at school, but you refuse to give blood because you don't want to lose an hour of your day. That hour of your day is more important than possibly saving a life. So you choose yourself over love of neighbor. Um, that means you missed the mark. You should have love of neighbor, should have been your goal, uh, but you missed the mark. Next is pesha or rebellion. This would be apathy and refusal to take correction. Um, it, it's expressed by either apathy, meaning, um, you know, lack of interest, I don't care. Um, for example, I'm not going to help the poor because they're not my problem. Um, next would be refusal to take correction. That's like when you would say to yourself, well, you know, who are you to tell me what to do? You can't tell me what to do. I, you know, you refuse to realize when you've made a mistake. And then finally, um, hostility toward those who are different. That's pretty, um, self-explanatory. Jesus calls us to love our neighbor and, um, it would be a uh, rebellion to refuse that commandment. <clears throat> so uh, next is the uh, word awon, which means guilt. And this is about the consequences of sin. Guilt, um, since Sigmund Freud has kind of been a negative thing in our culture, um, but guilt is a healthy thing. We feel guilty when we do something wrong, and that's what helps keep, keep us to doing the right thing. So these are the three consequences of sin. First, sin alienates us from God. Um, so uh, obviously, if the target is union with God, sin brings us away from God. Um, the next consequence is it alienates us from ourselves. And um, this results, as your book says, or the catechism says, in perverse inclinations that cloud conscience and corrupt the concrete judgment of the good, concrete judgment of good and evil. So that's what your conscience is, right? Thus, sin tends to reproduce and reinforce itself, but it cannot destroy the moral sense that it's at its root. That's syndaresis. Remember? We learned about the difference between syndaresis and conscience. So... Perverse inclinations, the more we sin, the more natural it seems and the more natural it feels. Um, and that le leads to a cycle of sin. And that clouds the conscience. The conscience can become clouded, but deep down inside, we have that moral sense and daresis to do good and avoid evil. And that can never be blotted out by sin. But again, this is the reason why in our first lesson, we talked about why venial sins can be dangerous. They start to cloud your... In they order you to what's bad, not what's good. bad, not what's good, and um, they cloud our judgment. So that's why we want to even avoid things that seem simple, like venial sins. And finally, sin alienates us from other. All sin is social. Um, there isn't a single sin that you can commit that isn't going to somehow impact someone else, even if you know. Uh, a student once asked, what about someone who's cutting themselves and uh, nobody else knows about it? Well, the idea that no one else sees that there's something wrong with you is mistaken. Um, people in your life realize that something's off, that you seem sad or that you're always covering up. And, you know, we're social creatures, so there's no sin that is uh, solitary. Um, all of our sin will alienate us from others. Moving on. So, um, looking at Jesus' approach to sin, ultimately, um, 
for for Jesus, sin is a failure to love. Um, we're called to love God because he loved us first, as the first letter of John says, and that's the essential nature of sin. Um, a failure either to love ourselves, one another, or God. And there's this great quote that your book has from Romans. Um, well, actually, I don't know if your book had this. This is a quote I picked from Romans. Um, so... In any case, um, I'm just going to read it here. So, for justice through the disobedience of one person, the many sin, the many were made sinners. So, through the obedience of one, many will be made righteous. The law entered in so that transgression might increase, but where sin increased, grace flowed all the more. So that as sin reigned in death, grace might reign through the justification for eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So um, this is a beautiful quote about how Jesus corrects the um, sin of Adam. Um, through the disobedience of one, Adam, Jesus is going to correct his sin. Where sin increased, grace flowed all the more. So even though we all were slaves to sin because original sin, so through um, uh, we were all made sinners through original sin, it's... Uh, Jesus' grace was able to overcome all of that. And that led St. Augustine to the famous quote, O Felix Culpa, that merited such and so great a redeemer. O Felix Culpa means, O happy fault. That in a certain sense, uh, paradoxically, the sin of Adam was a good thing because it brought about all of our salvation. And this is a line from the Exalt that we sing on Easter Vigil, which I'll show you in a second. But I wanted you just to know that phrase, oh, Felix, Cul Felix Culpa, oh, happy fault. Um, you know, that Adam should sin, that we should be redeemed. Um, so Jesus calls us to repentance and conversion in the sacraments. So um, in... Uh, in um, <clears throat> Uh, in our common language, uh, the, the convert, the word for conversion, metanoia in Greek, it means to turn around. That's what a conversion is. Um, as Matt Marr says in his song, all you have to do is turn around. Um, so Jesus gave us a way. How could we do this? By what manner do we turn around? By how do we show that we want to convert? Through the sacraments. First, through baptism, where we get sanctifying grace, which erases original sin, although not concupiscence. And then um, through the sacrament of reconciliation, we, when we commit mortal sins, we fall out again of sanctifying grace. And um, confession allows us to come back into God's good grace. So... Um, what the you're going to do now is take a look about more closely at what your book says about um, uh, sin and forgiveness. And um, what the students will do in class while they do this assignment, Classwork 6.28, I'm going to play the exalt from the Easter Vigil where we hear this line, Oh, happy fault uh, that merited so great a redeemer. And um, let's take a look. So this is the exult. This is what students are going to hear in class. So let me just play a bit of it for you. Exult, let them exult, the host of heaven. Exult, let angel me. Let all corners of the earth be glad. Glory. Let this so holy again, this is a song that you hear at the Easter Vigil. Um, it's sung while the Easter candle light is being brought into the sanctuary. Um, it's a really beautiful uh, reflection Therefore, on the whole of salvation history. Standing in the awesome and um, glory of this, this is what 
I'm going to play for the students while they do their assignment. So I will put a link to this on Schoology if you'd like to hear the whole thing. Um, that he who has been pleased to number me the unworthy among the Levites, that God, it is right and just, and pouring out his own ancient All right, so I was just looking at some other lines. All right, so, um, these that, um, all right, so you might want to listen to the whole thing. Be on the lookout for that line, um, oh, happy fault, uh, that we should get so great a redeemer. So this is the assignment that students are going to do. Um, if you... Oops. Hmm. So again, we're in the black chapter 6 folder. And classwork and discussions. And we're going to be doing classwork 6.28, Sin, Jesus, and Forgiveness. So this is a handout um, from the textbook. So you're going to need your text for this. If you don't have a textbook, um, you just share with a classmate. If you're absent, you, need to, you do need to make this one up. And so if you don't have a book, I could give you a copy. You could come in at lunch. Um, so using your text on pages 235 through 238, write your answer to the following questions. Um, I don't have a, a minimum for the amount of sentences, uh, for this one because, um, it just depends on the question. So you're going to answer all these questions and you can collaborate with classmates, um, in class. Uh, just make sure to put everything in your own words. So, <clears throat> oh, it got, it's like two-sided there. Um, but yeah, this is the assignment that we're going to do at the end of the lecture and um, make sure that you put this into notability, fill it out, and everyone needs to turn in their own copy. It's not a group assignment. You can discuss your answers with your family, but you need to turn in your own assignment in your own words. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me and thank you for watching this video lesson. <laughs>